Hey everyone, this is Pete. Welcome back to Atari A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari 8-bit games, some of which I grew up with and some of which are new to me. Today is one of the former, and again, like last time, I didn't really get it when I was a kid. So we're continuing our adventures from last time with the Temple of Apshai trilogy. So after we explored the Temple of Apshai, which is a fairly sort of serious fantasy adventure, the upper reaches of Apshai is designed to have a bit more of a light-hearted tone about it. Uh, there's various features in it that you will recognize from other Ampshai games. Most notably, there's mention of some of the characters that we came across in Gateway to Ampshire a while back even as well. So once again, uh, we will be exploring the upper reaches of Ampshai with the Book of Ampshai by our side, and we'll be looking at the various descriptions of the rooms and treasures as we come across them. So, I mean, if you want to know a bit more about this game and its release and uh, the, the Dungeon Quest series that it's part of, do please check back on the previous episode of this uh, and I'll tell you all about it. But for now, let's go play The Upper Reaches of Apshai. Okay, here we are once again with the Temple of Apshai trilogy from Epix. Uh, this time around, we are bringing along Pete again, because uh, he survived a few <laughs> ordeals last time so we may as well bring him along for this new adventure today um today we're going to be exploring the upper reaches of apshai which was originally released as a expansion pack for temple of apshai uh, when it first came out in this original dungeon quest incarnation and um is included as part of the temple of apshai trilogy now this is not a sequel as such uh, in fact it's it both the Temple of Apshai and the Upper Reaches of Apshai are apparently both designed for sort of beginning level characters. Whereas the Curse of Ra, which is the third part of the trilogy, is designed uh, to be played by characters who have a bit more experience and better equipment and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, we'll just have to see how we get on with this one. Now, again, as before, uh, we have the Book of Apshai by our side here. And again, each level has uh, room descriptions and so on that we can um, explore and find out more about. So, uh, let me just put a bookmark on the master treasure key, since we will have to find that. Alright, so, um, we've only got two silver, so I can't afford any more equipment at the minute. So let's just enter the temple. I'll have slow monsters again in the upper reaches of Apshai. And level one. So the context for level one, this is the innkeeper's backyard. Uh, the innkeeper has graciously assented to your cleaning up the yard behind his inn. He has warned you of the possibility of a thief in the neighbourhood, however, and dark rumours concerning peculiar happenings in the vegetable garden have been circulating lately. Be careful. Alright, so we begin in room number one. Room one is a wide roadway with a large rock in the centre. The inn lies off stage to the west. To the north and south are picket fences in need of a little paint. So you can see already we, we've got some different graphics going on here to represent the fact that we're outside rather than in a dungeon. Treasure number 20 is a large rock. Uh, treasure 20, a large rock of no value. Good. Start as we mean to go on, hey? Alright, let's proceed onwards. So if you didn't join us last time... Um, this is uh, a game that is primarily turn-based, and you move around by rotating and then pressing a number between 1 and 9 to take that number of steps in a single turn. And so the, the faster you move, the more you'll fatigue yourself, because you're effectively running uh, a, a longer distance in a shorter amount of time. So you have to kind of balance it out about um, a fair bit. This is, this is very much a game about stamina management in many ways. Um, hasn't become a huge deal for us up until this point. It's more the fact we've been getting killed by centipedes. But uh, yeah, that's sort of the main thing that's going on. Right, we're in room number two now. Rooms two to three, a small yard choked with weeds and littered with garbage. To the north is a large barn, to the east an alley, and to the south a stable area. To the right of the barn door are stacks of rotting garbage. Just to the left of the door is a small bonfire in which you note a gleam of something other than flame. Interesting. We should probably investigate. Oh, it's a flame trap. Or it's the fire. We found a copper piece. That's exciting. Copper piece. All that glitters is not gold. In fact, in this case, it's copper. A copper piece that someone carelessly dropped. Well, that will be worth something. At least, not very much. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Oh, the fire trap didn't damage us. That's all right. And it's not really a trap if you just walk into a campfire, is it? 
Right, room number four. Once used as a stable, this part of the yard and the roofless enclosure now smell of soap. The weeds are patchy and there are traces of suds in the grass. Inside, wet laundry hangs on the line in the corner. That's interesting. How do we go inside? Is it through that little gap in the corner there? <laughs> oh no! Housewife! <laughs> okay. So, is... Um, you're supposed to be able to talk to monsters in this. To try and get around them. So let's see if we can do that. Nothing. Nothing? You may pass by. Oh, thank you. Very kind of you. I'm going to take your treasure. Laundry! Eight. The laundry consists of a few shirts and a pair of pants. They are wet, not in your size, patched, and certainly not worth taking. Oh well, well, I've taken them anyway. Goodbye, housewife. Oh dear. Housewife is trying to kill me now. Well, I'm not standing for that shit. Come here. Yeah, you better run. Um, I'm gonna pop back to the inn and heal because that took a lot more health than I expected. I'm also massively encumbered, probably because I'm carrying a large rock around. So let's go and drop that off since we don't need it. Uh, drop off the treasures. Ah, that's better. Right. No, that housewife should still be dead now. So let's continue on our way. Room number three. Oh, that's that's still the yard with the weeds. Um, just to the left of the door is a small bonfire. Just to the right of the barn door are stacks of rotting garbage. That's not going to be worthwhile, is it? But let's have a look anyway. Because we are a good adventurer. And we always... Oh, flies! Oh, flies have many attacks per turn. But are not very good at hitting me, apparently. Another copper piece. Go, we're rich. Right, number eight. The barn. The place is obviously ill-kept, and straw and feathers are everywhere. You hear honking to the right, and loud clucking to the left. I'm going to guess that there's a horrible goose here. Yes, there is. Room ten. Oh, yeah, it's still the barn. All right, come on then, goose. Have some. Thou missed. Yeah. Oh, God. Another one. Come here. I'll get you. Any more? Any more for any more? Fine. What have we here? Stuff. Three small eggs. Or oh, treasure three small eggs. What does that mean? There are small eggs in a nest here, and you risk a foul attack to grab them. Alright. Hopefully they're worth something. We're going to get attacked by mad chickens now, aren't we? Yep. Here they are. Come on in. Chickens have two attacks per turn. That's not on. And a field mouse. I'm not afraid of you. You're a mouse. I have a sword. I can't hit you. But I'm not afraid of you. I still can't hit you. There we go. Gosh, I'm such a brave adventurer. More small eggs. Okay, well, let's head on out of here, shall we? I think we've done everything we can in this barn. Um, let's have a look down to the south. Room number six. The main stable area. The walls of the old building are full of badly patched holes and many planks are loose. The packed earth shows little sign of recent activity. Okay, let's have a look inside the stables. 
Oh no, field mouse. Inside, cogwebs clog the corners and mice are scurrying about the remains of someone's lunch. Oh, many mice. Many, many mice. There are so many mice. God, this is a job and a half, isn't it? Sure, Mr. Innkeeper, sure, I'll clean out your backyard. It's fine. I'm sure there's nothing dangerous in it. Just many mice. I like, does this guy not live here? Dog? Uh. Well. Are we done? Are we done? We're done. Right. Stale cheese! Treasure number nine. A large piece of stale cheese, the main attraction for the mice. That makes sense. Uh, I'm going to nip back and heal and drop off these treasures. Just because. I doubt there's anything super valuable amongst them, but we may as well see. Now examine thy treasures. Copper pieces is not worth anything. Small eggs are worth one. Laundry is worth nothing. Stale cheese is worth nothing. And a large rock is worth nothing. Well then, drop off thy treasures. Onward. Must be something good around here. Oh no, garden snake! This guy's garden is such a fucking mess. If you were wondering if I could go back to the temple and go and get some of those lilies and then come back here, no you can't, because... Um, sort of stuff like that are temporary items things like the cloak of protection that we found and the lilies once you go back to the inn you can't use those anymore um all treasures either get sort of taken away or sold or or whatever so the only permanent stuff that you can keep is weapons and armor and that kind of thing right room number 20 Oh, we passed through room 11 first. A narrow alleyway between the barn and the stable. It is thick with weeds, but a narrow path down the centre is worn down from the tread of many feet. Ahead is a gate and a low fence, the entrance to the berry patch. So we're now in the berry patch. So rooms 12 to 35, so this whole area, is the innkeeper's berry patch. It must be the right time of the year because every bush seems laden with luscious ripe berries. Since the innkeeper has given his permission and you're hungry, you decide to grab a basket and do some picking. What you don't eat, you can always sell in the village for a few copper pieces. While wandering through the bushes, you notice some tomato plants beginning to supplant the berries in some spots. There is in fact an entire tomato garden next to an old tool shed on one side of the berry patch. The berries are spread over a low hill that begins to slope steeply near the back hedge. Alright, well, let's have a look around here and we can hopefully get some berries out of it as well. So there's some berries, treasure number two. A big cluster of berries hangs in the bush in front of you. Well, good. More berries. Berries everywhere. Oh, needle trap. Pain. 
I guess that's like the needles from a bush or something. Uh oh, Doug. Get out of here, Doug. I'm picking berries. Leave me alone. Ouch. I have no health left. I think it's probably time to just wander back. No traps. No more needle traps. Oh no! That's a needle trap. I looked for it and everything! Elias the Dwarf Town. Ow! Oh. Uh, let's return to the inn. A total of two silver pieces. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad we did that. We've got a lot of experience, though. Um, but we can't buy anything with four silver. So, all right, well, let's head back in. Level one. I think you can probably safely go into the berry patch this time. Immediately. Maybe kill some things along the way. Garden snake. Nice. Nice. No more? Good. Open the door, or the gate rather, and we're back into the berry patch. Alright, let's try and retrieve a bunch of these without dying this time. Bloody mice! Okay. More berries. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Alright, is that trap there every time? Yes, yes it is. Alright, so I guess we're going to have to watch out for that trap each and every time we go for some berries. So the one that killed us off last time was along here, wasn't it? Carefully. No. Aha! There it is. Right, is that actually on the chest? Yes. Okay, so you don't have to be standing directly on a trap for it to trigger. Worth remembering. berries. Ouch! Didn't take any damage from that at least. Such an incompetent adventurer. Just tripping over and getting stung by berries. Oh no! Tomato! It's a living tomato. It's not a very strong tomato. This is bizarre. I see what people mean about this being weird. Because <laughs> yeah, like, like part of part of the point of this expansion was to provide a 
completely different sort of atmosphere to the original Temple of Apshai, and yeah, they're certainly succeeding with that so far. Any more spiky things? No. Okay. When did this finish? So anything after room number 35 um, means that we've left the berry patch. So I'll just put that book down for a sec, just while we explore the rest of this place. Very carefully. Oh no! Dog! Tomato! God, so many enemies around here. Enemies is a strong word for what we're encountering, but, you know. Dog! I'm sure the innkeeper won't mind his precious berry patch being littered. Ouch! Being littered with animal corpses. And we're down to zero wounds again. Uh... Oops. Done what I meant to do. But this does look safe. There's another trap. Let's just steer clear of that. And limp back to the inn. There we go. Alright, I may be bleeding out, but I've got a basket full of berries. Don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Oh, that could have been nasty. I'm running. I'm running far away. Examine thy treasures. I have 19 silver pieces worth of berries. Okay, let's drop them off. And continue on our way. There's that field mouse we left behind. Nicely done. The other field mouse we left behind. Yeah, this is quite nice, the amount of sort of persistence it's got. If you don't go back to the inn completely, if you just drop off your treasures and then you continue, there's like a real sense of persistence in the stuff you've picked up and the enemies you've encountered and the traps you've set off and that sort of thing. I mean, that all resets when you uh, go back to the inn, obviously, but... Um, it does uh, at least give you a, a sort of feeling of... Well, persistence. I am smart. I know words. Right. There are a couple of doors down to the south of this area, weren't there? I assume those are gates in the berry patch. Some more berries. Won't say no. Dog. Dead dog. I'm sorry to do any dog lovers, by the way. But, you know, needs must. Oh no! Drunk sailor! Kill him! Kill him! No, no, that appears to be killing me. Oh, another one! Bloody hell! What is happening in this room? I should probably check that. Where are we? Room 36. Room 36. A large shed. Tools and debris are scattered about. Signs of recent usage and a sort of rumbling sound coming from somewhere within alert you to the presence of someone or something inside. Could it be the thief or something more sinister? I think it's probably these drunken sailors.
Any more? Are we good? Are we good? Any traps? There shouldn't be traps in a shed, should there? Should there? It's a rusty chain. What does this have to offer for us? Probably nothing whatsoever. But let's have a look anyway. Uh, number 10. A large rusty chain of no use to anyone. Wonderful. Just what I always wanted. I really wish I had some healing items. No traps. Another rusty chain, perchance? No, no. Crockery. Is it precious crockery? Probably not. Some crockery, mostly broken. Now empty, but smelling of bad ale. Well, I think we know what went on here. Oh no. Uh, I'm going to run for now. Just because I'm at 22% health. And I don't really fancy my chances. I also don't really fancy my chances against that dog either. So let's just leg it for now. And drop off these berries. I already stomped out the fire, so that won't hurt me anymore. And here we are. What have we got? Rusty chain worth nothing. Well, we're doing fantastically for treasure. Let's see what else we can find. One shot in dogs. That's a good sign. Interesting thing about the experience system in this is you, you don't have levels as such. Or if you do, it keeps them all behind the scenes so you can't see what effect gaining experience is having on you. So it doesn't increase your stats or anything, just like in um, early editions of Dungeons & Dragons. So it sort of increases some behind-the-scenes stats, like your, your chance to hit uh, and your armor class and that sort of thing will probably go up as your experience increases. Right, I'm fighting fit. Let's kill this guy. Another one. Bollocks. Bring it on. Bring it on. I'll take you all on, you bastards. <sighs> Next. Any more? Huh? Any more? Who wants some? Ooh. Quiver Ho 16 arrows. What does that mean? Treasure number five. Near a hoe, you find some arrows which may be of use. Yes, damn right they'll be of use. How do we shoot arrows? I've forgotten. Um F to fire an arrow. I remember you have you have to be lined up quite uh, precisely to actually hit things with arrows in this, so uh, they're not the easiest things in the world to use, but they can be quite useful. As you can probably imagine. Alright, so that takes dog. Oh no! I love how your head falls off every time you die. Delightful. Elias the Dwarf found the 
Uh, drop off their treasures. Yeah, he's stolen all our arrows. What a prick! I was gonna use those! Bastard. Alright, well, we can keep exploring anyway. Flies! Right, what is going on through that other gate? Oh, there's several more gates. And a tomato! Die! Not a tomato. Right, we're now in room... Oh god, we got a... Torrent of tomatoes to deal with, Festival. This is evidently Tomato Headquarters. Right, room 44. The vegetable garden. Aside from a few struggling carrots, there seems to be nothing here but tomatoes. Some of these, however, are huge, bigger than pumpkins. Near the gate, you discover a dead chicken. Closer inspection says that it is covered not with blood, but with ketchup. What can this mean? And what else may be hidden beneath these strangely menacing vines? Hmm. Oh, yeah, it does have descriptions of all the traps in here. So, yeah, absolutely right. If you encounter a flame trap, you step right in the bonfire. Watch where you are going. And the dust trap. Try not to kick up so much dust next time. Needle trap. Some of these bushes have needle-like thorns. Be careful. And the flies. If you insist on walking through the garbage, then you should expect to put up with a few flies. All right, well, let's see what we can find in this vegetable patch. Aside from more dogs that are going to kill us. No. Nope. We killed the dog. Oh no! Oh, so many deaths. So many deaths. But fortunately, as you can see, death is not necessarily the end in this. I think it's actually quite rare that you get eaten. But when you do, your game is over completely. It's kind of the, I guess, the video game equivalent of the, the Dungeon Master sort of fudging things slightly so that characters don't die permanently very often. Because you can imagine how heartbreaking it would be for a character, for a player who's been playing the same character, maybe for years in some cases, to suddenly lose everything. Oh, it's a killer tomato, not a normal tomato. And that's why it keeps killing us! Right, I got this. I'm taking down that motherfucker. He's gonna get a taste of sword! Right in his face. The one nice thing is part of that persistence that I mentioned is um, that if you did some damage to some monsters, uh, then that persists as long as you don't go back to the inn as well. So any hits that we've successfully scored on the killer tomato so far... Oh god, he does so much damage! Death! That's got to be worth a bunch of experience, right? Now give me the treasure. Chicken soup. Treasure number seven. A large pot of very tasty chicken soup. Well, that's nice, isn't it? Oh no, another one! Uh, I ain't gonna die, aren't I? Clearly. Uh, let's at least try and run away. Missed! Fuck you! Ooh. 
brave, brave Sir Robin bravely ran away. Well, time for another limp back to the uh, to the inn. Anyway, let's cash out for now and see. 26. Absolutely pathetic. Um, we now have 30 silver pieces, though. Still have no bow, because the dwarf keeps stealing it. No arrows, because the dwarf keeps stealing them. Um, how much do we need for... Okay, so we've already got the best weapon we can wield for the minute. Uh, what about armour? Need a hundred for ring mail. Okay. Let's head on back in. Oh, well, I gave that message. The disc was in the drive. Right. Well, if nothing else, we can go and get a bunch of berries again. Should we go and kill the housewife? No, let's not. I am going to go and fight those sailors again, though. And get those... I haven't got a bow. So it's probably not worth doing that, is it? And the eggs and stuff in here weren't worth very much either. Flies! Snakes! Dust trap. Okay. Doesn't seem to do very much. Mouse. Oh, for heaven's sake. Get out of here! Right. Into the berry patch again! And we'll... Grab a few berries again. Just because they're worth something. Not very much, but something. Right, there's the other gate that we didn't go through, so let's... Oh no, that's the... I thought there were three gates, but apparently there's only two. Okay. Well, let's go and fight the sailors again, because, you know, experience. Drunk sailor! Dead sailor, more like... bunch of them down here weren't there. Hmm, 30% life. And again, 23% life. I feel like I've got more hit points. I think I've leveled up. Because, like, you used to be going down by, like, sort of 33% at a time. And there seem to be more divisions on the uh, percentage now. So I think I have more hit points. Which is good, because that means I can survive more hits. All right. Give me those arrows. 20 arrows? Very nice. Now, if I can just hold on to them. That'd be lovely. Should I go and buy a bow? I should probably go and buy a bow, shouldn't I? Let's do that. Could do with going back for a quick rest anyway. And then maybe we can have a look at the next level. How are we doing for time? 40 minutes. Not bad. We'll go for about an hour on this again, like last time. 
Is it, I'm actually really enjoying this. As like I said in the um, in the intros, I didn't really understand this game when I was a kid. At least partly because we only ever had a pirate copy of it. Uh, which meant I didn't have the manual. And so I didn't have all the cool room descriptions and the, the little hints in there. And the details about how the rules worked and that sort of thing. So there was a ton about this game that I didn't know at all simply because I didn't have access to the documentation. All right, return to the inn. Six silver. It's better than nothing. Give me a bow. There already has one. I don't remember buying that, but apparently I did. Okay. Well. Uh, back into the temple then. Let's have a look at level two. Right, level two. Here is where we get some references to um, some of the stuff that we heard about in Gateway to Apshai, if you remember. So this is Merlis's cottage. Merlis, if you remember, was the um, the sort of spirit of the old man that spoke to the hero at the start of Gateway to Apshai in the prologue to that that was in the manual um, and sort of sent him on his quest, provided him with his initial equipment and then crumbled into dust and sort of left the, the guy feeling fairly bewildered. So... Here's the setup for this level. Merlis has disappeared somewhere, vanished, owing you wages for repairing and painting the fence around his cottage. With some trepidation, you have decided to venture forth into his abode in search of the lost wages. You suspect Merlis has done this deliberately to tease or test you. However, you also suspect that if you do something serious, such as harming his cats, he may become very angry, and it never pays to make a magician mad. Prepare for some strange and peculiar effects in the course of your investigation. All right, so we begin in room number one, the small foyer of the cottage of Merlis the Mage. A pale greenish light emanates from nowhere in particular, and the walls are decorated with arcane symbols and spooky magical stuff that no doubt maintain Merlis's image, but don't impress you much. All right, let's wander down his hallway and into room number two. A long, narrow hallway filled with remarkably lifelike sculptures of men and beasts. Paintings of the village, strangely distorted but oddly vivid, hang on the wall. The scenes seem to move when you are not looking at them. Sounds you cannot identify emanate from the walls. Does that mean there are secret doors? Oh, God! That'll be the source of a sound then, a gremlin. Alright, and into room number three. The corridor widens into a large reception area with many doorways. The chairs, seats for those waiting for an appointment in Merlis's magic hall, have seen much use. Alright. What is happening in here? Thou art too far away. Oh, okay. That's apparently a way out. Well, now we know. There are multiple exits from this place. Oops, wrong button. Right, what is through this door? That is also an exit. Fair enough. Maybe this is some of the peculiar effects they were talking about. Or perhaps he just has multiple doors out of his home. is down in that corner. Is that a passageway that leads somewhere? It looks that way. 
Room number 12. The back room in the cottage. There is a door leading out the back of the house into a forest. There are some empty files on the floor of the otherwise tidy room. Okay, let's leave that room for now. Have we'll a look around the rest of the place first. Room 10. Merlis's Hall of Magic. A large table occupies the centre of this dimly lit room. There is a chest in one corner and a huge tapestry covering the bank wall. While moving around through the room, things appear to shimmer every now and again. You suspect there may be more here than meets the eye. That smells like secret doors to me. But apparently not. No, no, it's a moth trap. It's a cat. I probably shouldn't kill that. And it's an empty chest. Treasure 6, empty chest. Uh, when you open the chest, you find the only things inside were moths. That makes sense. Talk to the cat. You may pass by. Thank you, cat. I don't want to kill you, because cats are awesome. Right, room number seven. A laboratory. There are many bottles and jugs you are afraid to touch, and some complicated machinery. There is a small crack in one wall near the ceiling, and a door on the east side. Over the sign, a door. Over the door, a sign warns: "Danger! Do not enter." Hmm. Okay. Um. I'm guessing that door on the west will probably lead back outside again, but let's. Just have a look, just in case. Let's fight this gremlin first. Alright. Alright, there's an actual room beyond there. Room number eight, in fact. The crack leads to a huge nest and landing area on the roof of the cottage. It is not visible from below. The large flying creature, evidently one of Merlis's strange animal friends that usually occupies the area, is not here. Looking round, you see what looks like a large egg to one side. Well, I'm going to steal it. You had better believe it. Ouch. Baby dragon! Fuck. That wasn't so bad. Eggshell! Treasure number 20. A large eggshell of value only to a large egg. Well. Uh, so, Malice. About... About the... About the dragon you were hatching, there was there was an accident. There was a small accident. It was it's fine. It's absolutely fine. There was just there was just a little bit of an accident, and and the dragon sort sort of isn't there anymore. I hope that's okay. I hope that's cool. Okay, Melis, thank you. Goodbye. Leave me alone, cat. You may pass by. Thank you very much. That's what I get for my massive ego or intelligence or whatever. Not sure which score determines whether or not you can do that. Either way, whatever I've got is working. So, let me out. Guinea pig. Room number nine. Another laboratory. This one is filled with cages of small animals. A sign reads, please leave or you may scare the experimental animals to death. Okay. Let's leave the poor old guinea pig to it. Let's uh, just placate the cat again. Oh, 
Oh no! Wasps! Ow! Jesus Christ. Apparently wasps are fucking deadly. Well, we found absolutely nothing of value there. Alright, I think that's probably time we left that there. Um, we've had a fun adventure there. I enjoyed that. In fact, I think I enjoy that more than standard Temple of Apshai. Uh, just because the, the writing is um, is really on point in that one. Yeah, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Looking forward to trying Curse of Ra now, although I may have to sort of level up my character and get some better equipment for him uh, before we tackle that. But we'll see. We'll see how we get on with that when we come to it. If worse comes to worst, we can always take the cheat approach, which is to create a new character by just typing in all of your stats and starting with a character that is ready to go for Curse of Ra. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been fun playing this properly and sort of as intended, if you like. Yeah, good time. Good time. That was Upper Reaches of Apshai. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. Check out Atari A to Z .wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects, MoeGamer.net, where I explore Japanese and Japanese inspired games from yesterday and today, and VideoPackGames.wordpress.com, which aims to catalogue the small but well formed library of the Philips G7000 Video Pack Computer, also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.